It's October and it's getting cold, which can only mean one thing, sweater weather is here. Have you got your sweaters out yet? <laughs> Here's what's coming up. Hello, welcome back. It's Stuart here from my shop, The Woolpatch, a yarn fabric haberdashery shop in Long Melford, Suffolk, UK. It's good to see you. It's October already. <laughs> How has that happened? But it's getting cold, which we all love because it means it's sweater weather. Yes, it's time to crack out your woolly knits. And considering the current economic climate, we're not gonna be wanting to turn our heating on, so we're all gonna be sat in woolly knits. I've got mine out already here in the shop. Well, actually I've been in all week because it's so nice. This is what I like to call my Game of Thrones coat. <gasps> Look, and if I can, this is where I like to pretend I'm Joseph in his coat. Uh, look, Whew. how cool. <laughs> but I, I also feel like Jon Snow, which is why I call it my Game of Thrones coat. Irene knitted this for me last year and uh, I found this wonderful pattern and I was going to model it in the forest. I had a photo shoot booked and on the day of the photo shoot, happened to be the hottest day of the year. There I was thinking I'd be in a nice forest, it would be cold, it would be atmospheric, it might be wet, windy and everything. I still had really long hair then and I thought, yes, this will look really good for like a Game of Thrones style photo shoot. And there it was, really, really hot. But you got some nice sunbursts streaming through. So I'm gonna shut up now and you're gonna take a look at this. This is me in my knitted Game of Thrones coat. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, and look, pockets. I, I can have a brooch put in it to, to keep it together if I wanted to there. But actually, I just really like having it loose. It's merino, wonderfully soft. I re-knitted it as pattern, just added a bit longer because I'm six foot four. <laughs> so had you not lengthened it, it would probably ended up at my knee. Uh, so we've got a little bit extra in there, but otherwise it's as pattern and it's just really, really nice. I think I'm going to be wearing this all <laughs> winter. It's going to get cold and here in the shop, it is to that point where actually I I can't put the heating on. So we're just looking at ways of, right, uh, how to keep the shop warm. I've got curtains made everywhere. So you can see the curtain there, but also if I just turn the camera around, look, there's a curtain there as well. Uh, this is where you go into the shop. And on this side, beautiful patchwork, beautiful patchwork. So I just got to line it this side um, and I'm hoping that will let's keep me back here hey everyone <laughs> I'm hoping that is going to trap whatever heat we have during the day here so then it stays in at the night so when I come in at 10 in the morning it's still warm in here because normally it is freezing in 10 in the morning um, and so then the heat has to go on and, and you know we're all in that same position those bills are going up find ways of perhaps uh, getting away with not putting that on so um, uh, sitting in our woolies and the curtain is one of them so 
So there we are. So yes, have you got your winter woolies out? Have you got a favourite winter jumper? Anya popped in the shop today and we had a good chat and she actually said, Stuart, do you know of a good knitted jumper pattern? And I was like, ooh. No, I, I don't off the top of my head. Uh, so if you have any recommendations of a great jumper, V-neck, long sleeved jumper, then pop them down in the comments. Always good, because I think we're all going to be needing them <laughs> to keep warm, aren't we? Oh, anyway. Oh, date for your diary. Yes, I'll get you, give you a chance to get your diary out, get your phone out. You ready? The Woolpatch Show is going to be live in November. <gasps> I <laughs> know, I am so scared and nervous, yet kind of really excited too. <laughs> it's going to be lovely chatting to you live. It will be lovely to have you join in and watch live and chat away in the comments. <music> Who's doing the West Knits Mystery Knit Along? <gasps> are you? great you could join in with me because I'm doing it too. Before I go into showing uh, any of the pattern and what I've done so far this is just a spoiler alert so if you are doing it and you haven't started yet then skip to the next chapter in the description. You can see it there just hover your mouse over and go to the next chapter. Uh, otherwise I'm going to start talking about the West Knits Mystery Knit Along 2022. <gasps> you ready? So, Clue 1 has been announced literally today and I've started it already and it starts with <laughs> an I-cord. Look at that. So, classic I-cord. Wonderful. And that's as far as I've got. I've chosen my colours, so I'll show you my colours. They recommended to do... A, a, a like a dark and a light and then a pop main color contrast color and then a pop or, or an accent so of course I had to do it in the lavender and blue really so that's my main color beautiful denim then my contrast color or my light color sky and then I was thinking what should I do for my pop color I could have perhaps a commercial yarn like a Zyber ball. So I was thinking of a maybe blue and then you're going to get all these different stripes. But I thought, oh, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing so well with my lavender and blue. Wouldn't it be nice to show that off? And I thought, well, perhaps I should have a variegated lavender and blue. So as I was looking through the wool shed to uh, find some wool to see if I can re-dip or right, make something uh, uh, variegated, I found a natural one. I thought I dyed them all. <laughs> but no, look, this is how it came to me from the mill. Well, it came to me on a hank. I've now caked it up. And I thought, wow, that might look beautiful as the accent colour, the pop colour. How beautiful does that look? I have never done a West Knit shawl before. <laughs> Wish me luck. Um, uh, I enjoyed doing the eye cord. Interesting how he does the I cord on circulars. So you knit your three and then slip your three back to your left needle and then knit your three, slip it back. That was a bit odd. Uh, I just did it on uh, a DPN because when you knit your three on the DPN, you just shove it over to the other side and knit your three, shove it over to the other side and knit your three. Uh, so that was much easier. So if you are starting it and you didn't know of that then do your three knits your i cord on a dpn It'd be even quicker uh, less fiddly uh, so I, I i've done that successfully i've now got to pick up all along this i cord edge <laughs> that's gonna be exciting so wish me luck there if you are joining in with the west knits mystery knit along let me know in the comments below um, and uh, it'll be great to see what you do and then when you finish it whenever that is whether that's this month because it's for the whole of october uh, i've got to work hard to try and keep up with that or whether it's november when you post your finished pictures it'd be lovely if you could tag us in as well right ready for a bit of fun yes let's do guess the year then let's see what the pattern is this time Ooh. 
Ooh, some sewing this time. Great. Ooh, that's colour. Mm. Two decades. Ooh. Mm. What are you thinking? Okay, so we're going uh, n clearly not 80s, 70s, 60s, but... Mm. Mm. 70s, good photography, and the hairstyle with that sort of side parting and the and the, the curls there. Oh, what are you gonna go for? Oh, oh, see now I'm completely in. <laughs> no, I don't know when to go early or late. All right, keep thinking about it. You don't have to lock in yet, and uh, uh, the picture will come up during the show, and you can keep thinking about it, and we'll come back to it towards the end. Great one. <gasps> yes. Loads of new stuff in the shop. It's just that time of year, isn't it? Autumn is our busiest time. A new yarn in, we had it in last year and it did so well, we had to have it in again. Different colors this time, it's Malabrigo Rasta. Immortal, stunning neon green. Neon green with pops of yellow. It's a canary green for sure. If you know Norwich City, it's very much that color. Hints of that there, you see, yellowy green. It's beautiful. All the neon colors are in. The other new color for 2022 is Persia. It's teal is cyanish uh, and the computer the camera is is making it more blue that there actually isn't blue it's it's very much i would perhaps call it a peacock or that yeah mallard it's that tealy blue um but with gray in and the gray is showing up beautifully well and then i went for this one solace which is one of their best selling colors. Blues and greens. It's like a beautiful ocean. Wonderful. And then, very similar to Anniversario, this one is Talisman. Purples, pinks, hint of russet in there and sort of copper, but it's if you want inspiration, go onto Instagram and look for Aspen Leaf Knits Ginny. She does beautiful, super chunky hats in the round and she does beautiful cowls. I've got her Sidewinder beanie pattern and it's beautiful. You can knit one of those up in an evening. You put a posh pom pom on the top and it's stunning for a gift. These have gone up in price another quid. So uh, for me, they're retailing at £20. They were £19 last year. When you think about it, if a pom pom cost you £20 and, and a, a posh hand dyed merino hank of yarn cost you 20 pound 40 pound for a christmas present actually is very doable isn't it if you want to give it as a christmas present <laughs> you won't want to keep it yourself because it's so warm and snug another new yarn we've got is from king cole called harvest It's a cake yarn, variegated through shades of similar colors, but it's 
a long variegation. So if you're, I've got some patterns here so you can see. So if you're knitting a jumper, see what I mean? You've got a big band, not so big, big band, big band. So the variegation is long. Obviously, if you were doing a blanket, have I got that pattern here? No. If you're doing a blanket, those stripes are going to be a lot thinner because you're going to be casting on what a, a meter's worth of, of stitches. So your your stripes are going to probably be a centimeter. Whereas these, oh look, look at that one there. I'm guessing are probably three centimeters to, to four. And um, it's a lovely yarn. It's a nice price point because it's an acrylic mix. What have we got here? 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. And it comes in so many colors. So let's go through the colors. The first one they call is blossom. Pinks, lavenders, purples and whites. A frost, which are your blacks and your charcoals. Blacks, greys, charcoals and whites. Morning sky, which gives you an idea. Beautiful blues, sky blue, pale blue, denim blue, and royal blue. Berries. This one is chestnut. Dark browns, pale browns, creams, heather. Purples, denim blue, and greys in there. This is babbling brook. Um, so are we thinking a, a, a brook and what's in there? A beiges and browns and it retails at, for me, at £7.60. These are 150 gram balls. So for a, a really sort of lap, good lap size blanket, you would probably want three. We've got the patterns too. The patterns are interesting. Actually, this one from King Cole, I thought was quite, it didn't look too dated, it was quite modern. So you're going to have the knits going that way, but then you can see this top part is knitted that way, very modern, uh, has a cardigan on the back, very much that way. <laughs> um, and you, oh yes, and you saw that one, the short sleeve. All on the website, um, but great for, as I say, blankets or great for, for, for sweaters. Sweater weather, brilliant. So there we are, that's King Cole Harvest, a new double knit cake, 150 grams, that has come into the shop. For you sewers out there who like making crib quilts for little ones, two wonderful bolts have arrived. I've been waiting some time for this, <laughs> just for two bolts as well. It is beautiful. Let me show you this. It's from Timeless Treasures, a, a, a very well-known American quilting brand, 100% cotton. It's just, it's, it's not part of a collection. It's just these two random ones. Uh, I wish they had done a bigger collection actually, because it would have made a beautiful collection if we'd had like five or six, but there we are. Uh, it's called Animals and Letters. And it's, it's just beautiful because it's so different. You've got, uh, the letters there with the animals and you've got a turtle you've got panda you've got tiger and you've got elephant that font is just beautiful so you can learn uh, the words you can teach the letters with the, the t the m the a and so forth but look at that color palette what would you call that it's kind of a, a, oh it's that peacock color again isn't it that tealy peacock with very faint purpley greys with uh, that beige color, which I'm seeing more and more. It's coming into the knit world as well. Uh, lots of yarn colors like stone or biscuit. When I saw that, I just had to have it. And the partner fabric to that is kind of like a, um, a, a border. It is directional, 
but it's just beautiful and it's repeated look at that so there they are those animals which as i say when you look at it like that an interesting choice the zebra the turtle the tiger the panda the elephant the koala um but it's just delicate beautiful pastel pastel color but not stereotypical at all watercolor it's a shooting star there the tree and it's just it's repeated so when you open the fabric up look at that wonderful Ting saw this last week because he came to visit and say hello and we had a catch up. He saw the fabric and went, oh, that will be perfect. One of his friends is expecting and he said, oh, that will be a great quilt. He's already designing something, something different, half square triangle wise. Solid colours he's chosen. Oh, oh. There's your biscuit. There's your, your peacock. And look at this one. Oh. He wanted fat quarters, so I cut his fat quarters. No, actually, <laughs> he ended up cutting it himself because I was with a customer. Um, he had uh, fat quarters, so I've got a fat quarter kit left, which I will sell, because um, he's gonna bring it in and we can show it off in the shop. Look, can you see, is that, there's that sort of lavendery pale purple color I was saying. There's the biscuit. Ting, it's gonna look wonderful. Can't wait to see it and to have it in the shop. Uh, I'm sure it will inspire people and obviously to have in the gallery. <gasps> Wouldn't it be good if we have it for the live ting? Right, you've got to make it. You've got to make it in a month. <laughs> well, that's plenty of time for you, surely. <laughs> I know, obviously, he'll, he'll be saying, he said, I am a teacher, you know, I've got all that work. <laughs> But yes, get it done for the live and we can have it live. Oh, it could be a special guest. Oh, speaking about that live, got a few special guests lined up. So it will be the Woolpatch show as normal. So as I say, we'll have guest a year, we'll have uh, the gallery, but we're gonna have a few guests dialing in. Mm, it's gonna be good fun. What else are you gonna do on a Sunday night at eight o'clock? You will have watched Strictly. You will know who got booted out. <laughs> so you can then just log on to YouTube and join in with the knitting sewing chat for an hour. It's gonna be great fun. So they are ting, that's your challenge. So two new fabrics into the shop. <sighs> Whew, well, I've sprinted through that, I'm exhausted. Lovely little story for you now. Um, so get, get comfy uh, and get your, your, your ears ready. You can knit away <laughs> whilst listening to this. I was at my mum's, Mum Monday, as it's now coined, where I do all my dyeing at my mum's. Um, I'm there dyeing with her while she's making some scaffold board shelves or she's upcycling some secondhand furniture that she's got hold of. We're working away together. That's what we normally do on a Monday. And uh, I said to her, I said, oh, can we go uh, looking in the garage? Because um, I want some of my old tapes. You know, the old tapes that used to put in the Walkman? <laughs> I know some of you had them, didn't you? <laughs> um, I, as a kid, used to like it's going to sound really embarrassing there, but I used to like pretending to be a DJ. I would put the tape on and, and record me talking to an imaginary audience. It's probably the first type of, of, of podcast <laughs> way before it's time. Um, uh, and I had a, a, a make-believe radio station of either BBC Radio 7 or I had, <laughs> you'll love this, Radio Teddington. And you know you have like the, the, the 105.4 or whatever or 102.7. That's what you used to have in the 80s, wasn't it? I had Radio Teddington, um, Radio Teddington, 298.51, stereo. <laughs> that was the jingle. Of course, you've got to have a jingle for your radio station. Anyway, I digress. So I said to mum, said, can we hunt them out? Because I'd like to get these tapes and digitise them. So there we are looking in the garage. Now, 
I think most people have the same garage as I, as my mum does. Uh, well, I, I even have the same garage. You very rarely park your car in the garage, but there is an awful lot of stuff particularly at the back end where you normally go in, you go in, park your car, and then right at the other end there is just boxes or there's shelves full of boxes and those boxes are full of boxes or there's suitcases full of boxes. You get the idea. So there we were hunting around and I kid you not, I came across a box and when I opened it, I felt like I was in a cartoon where it was going to go, Hallelujah! <laughs> and and gold light beaming out of it. Uh, not because I had found the tapes of mine of the 80s, but I had found some work of my grandfather that dates back to 1970 when he'd made it. Phenomenal. And I was blown away. So I literally, as I lifted the cardboard box off, I was blown away by what I saw because it was just there literally facing me and I'm going to show you and maybe you'll have the same reaction. 20 questions and a few answers in a ring binder journal and I was like oh my god the world stopped took it out and I had to look through it there and then. We have a phenomenal record of this man's work. Now, I don't know whether you watched my vlog, well, about nearly this time last year, November last year, I did a special remembrance vlog. Same show, but content was all about my granddad. He was a, 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 a he fought in the Second World War as a desert rat, and he went to El Alamein, and he did that famous battle all the way across uh, to Tunis as a desert rat. And he had made some phenomenal artifacts uh, whilst there. He, he'd made some birthday cards, some Christmas cards, he'd written some poetry, some phenomenal work. And I was blown away with it. So I'd made this vlog video showing uh, you his stuff. Well, now, if you don't mind indulging me for a couple of minutes, I would like to show you even more of his work because it is just phenomenal. So there you are, the front page with this beautiful gold leaf there and then the, the subtitle. And you open it up and I was just transfixed right from the start. During my quest for answers to these 20 questions, I found more answers than I needed, so hence the booklet. The whole project has given me the greatest pleasure and I trust it will amuse those who care to read it. Well, after reading that, I just couldn't do anything else. So there I was in the garage reading away. And you open up this document here. So that's beautifully folded. Um, I don't know whether you know journaling. It's Journaling is the current trendy word for scrapbooking, basically, uh, which we used to do in the 80s, wasn't it? That was one of the hobbies, ripping things out, sticking them in. Jen, Jen, uh, you, you, you need to sit down when you're watching this because you'll love this. Jen is a, a big journaler. We've talked on this vlog before, many, many years ago now. Jen was on showing us her journaling, um, and this is an early form for that. And uh, there's nothing better than when you have things to unfold. So look at that. So here we go, can you see that? Five pounds to be won on holiday. <laughs> Join the great Skull family holiday hunt competition. Skull uh, was a village where he lived in Dis, Norfolk. Entry forms, one shilling each, to be completed and handed in to the rectory. Closing date, 15th of September, 1970. <laughs> Phenomenal. Judge's decision is final. And there we have these 20 questions. Remember, this is way, way, way before Google. So some of these questions are very hard and you would have to do an awful lot of research to find the answers and probably an awful lot of traveling too. Uh, so just a few questions. The most curious epitaph. That's number one. Number six, church with a thatched roof. How many churches with thatched roofs could there be in the UK? A three-tier pulpit is one. Box pews is another. Number 16, a leper's squint. <laughs> uh, 
Number 14, a carved eagle lectern. Um, and 20, the last question, any interesting feature not mentioned above? Will you bring us back a souvenir for sale at our harvest supper in aid of the Churchill Redevelopment Fund? Happy hunting. <laughs> Phenomenal. And there's calligraphy, there's paintings, there's sketches, there's all different types of writing, there's typing as well with this typewriter. There. Beautifully stuck in. These pages haven't coloured at all. Cartridge paper, beautifully cream, not gone yellow at all. Question six was church with a thatched roof. Now they only wanted one church with a thatched roof, but as my granddad said right at the beginning, um, I found more answers than I needed, hence the booklet. Um, oh, and there's a note at the bottom. Norfolk has more thatched churches than any other county in England. In 1949, there were 54, and in the early part of last century, over 300. All that there. Now look at that. Question 10. Interesting church porch prayer. St John's Folkestone, Kent. Now look at that. So he's written it out. Beautiful. We just keep flicking through. And look, a postage stamp bearing a picture of Greenstead Church. Wow. Look at that. I mean, that's... It's even got the... The stamp on it, can I see the date there? Oh, I can't make it out. Wow. It's just phenomenal. And as you keep turning, then we find, oh, oh isn't that just amazing? His drawings, his sketches of all the churches. Phenomenal. Uh, it is just wonderful and seeing his calligraphy writing just ah uh, makes my heart explode with love and admiration for for such skills astonishing so proud to have such a clever granddad uh, to take the time to put that together after being clearly so inspired to answer these 20 questions to win a fiver <laughs> If you look closely, you can see his sketches. Uh, he's clearly tried to answer the questions there at first. You see? He then literally at the shoe box and there it was. Never seen it ever. Um, uh, and uh, just knew it straight away. That's my granddad's writing. It's, you can see a calligrapher's style uh, anywhere and you 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 it's, it's a bit like directors and uh, auteurs you you know a style of that director well you know you know a, a tony alicia calligraphy basically when you see that he always used this watercolor uh, the light and the dark pale blue and the dark blue top and the bottom um uh, and i know this is general calligraphy and it's a certain way but that color was definitely him uh so it was just just lovely so i hope you enjoyed that uh, just a little moment of of a find a, a magical find that now um can be shared and enjoyed and especially as he'd said there it will amuse those who care to read it well thank you granddad i took the time to, to read it and it has amused me and it has granddad amused many people who watch this vlog um so uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed that looking down up there <laughs> Right, now would be the time where we usually sit back, kick up our feet and put down our knitting ready to watch the gallery. But because we're going to be having a live in November, I thought we'd save the pictures and make sure we've got a jam-packed gallery for November. <laughs> um, so we're going to skip the gallery this episode and we'll have a bumper one for November one for when we do the live. So look forward to seeing your work then. So. Yes, so if you, you, all right, so four weeks to make lots of different things, <laughs> four weeks to finish your knitting or your sewing or whatever you're making, get a picture of it, hashtag the wool patch on Instagram, or just send it to me on email, the details are all below, and then we can have a bumper edition for our live show. Oh, it'd be great. The gallery is always great, um, but it will be just lovely to be able to comment live when we see all the, all the finished objects that you've made.
Brilliant, can't wait for that. Right, shall we go back to guest of the year? Ready to lock in? Let's go for it. Right, what do we think? Beautiful in lemon. Ready? You've got it sorted? Lock in now then, here we go. Three seconds to find out what it is. Our guest of the year pattern for this episode is 1973. <laughs> Did you get it? It was deceiving. Fabulous, isn't it? I'm sure you'll be able to tell me in the comments. Oh, that you probably guessed straight away. Oh no, definitely early 70s because of this, this and this. Uh, what there uh, is the giveaway for 1973. Let me know if there is definitely some giveaways there because you're probably you're probably shouting at the screen. Oh God, Stuart, yes. That belt is such a giveaway of early 70s or the the uh, the hair maybe. <laughs> but wonderful, wonderful. I tell you, we have got a cracking guest of the year for the live. Very in keeping with my finished make that I'm going to show you, the polo, uh, the knitted polo that Colin made for me. Wow, there we are. Boom. That's another show done. It's been lovely having your company. Love it when you sit here with me and we talk all things knitting and sewing. Uh, let me know in the comments what projects you're working on. I'd love to have your finished photos for the live gallery. Yes, our first live November. <laughs> I've mentioned it so many times, haven't I? You, you know already. November the 6th, Sunday, November the 6th, 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. live on YouTube. The same Woolpatch show, the same format with a few added guests, but live. So you can tap away in the comments and get joining in uh, and, and see see uh, if you guess the year live. <laughs> no cheating, obviously. You've got time to go off and Google. But yes, it's going to be great having your company. So I hope you can join me live. Uh, on Saturday the 6th of November. Until then, get those winter woolies out. Sweater weather is here. Oh, remember, I'd love your recommendations on uh, a, a V-neck, good classic jumper. Doesn't matter if it's top down or uh, knitted flat. Would love that. Then I can pass them on to Anya. Lovely having your company. Take care, won't you? And see you on the next one. Oh, which is live. Bye-bye. <laughs>